In this episode, we look at the power of transformation and how easy it can be when you know who you are and who you're not. What if transformation was simply a willingness to let go of limiting beliefs? Join us for a peaceful hour and hear how the Unminding Project is undergoing its very own transformation. Enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. Hi, Jem. Are you there? So how's everyone doing? Hi, Bob. Thank you for coming. Lovely to have you here. Hi, Harry, Cliff. Who else have we got? Crypto Italia, Rex. Hello. It's so nice to see you all. What I will do is I will begin to just look at tonight's topic, I think. We're going to be talking about transformation. So it's quite a huge area because it's like there's nothing that doesn't quite cover transformation and there's so many areas that we feel that we need to be better in and we need to transform in so it's a really big topic and I'm, I can carry on on my own no problem but obviously when Jem can get in she will so yesterday we actually did our first video record so that will be out on YouTube soon so if you want to, some of you may not want to, though, you can see our faces. It was an hour and a half show, and it was with an amazing coach called Jamie Smart. He's a best-selling author. He teaches the three principles. He's been around it a little bit longer than I have, but I met him very early on in my days of understanding the principles. So, yeah, it was a really good interview. I think you guys will really enjoy it, and I think you've listened to me talk about the principles for 40 five or 46 episodes over a year and a half now that we've been going so the fact that you can hear it from someone else will give you a fresh perspective and that's always nice it's always good to hear someone else talking about this because we're all talking about the same thing but we all hear it in a slightly different way and we all teach it in a slightly different way so that's really important that might be Jem on the unminding account let's see if that works Obviously, big thanks to our sponsor, Vemp. You know, they're amazing. Vemp XYZ, please go check them out. Big love to our cult family, as always. We all had a chat this morning, which was lovely. It was really nice to wake up and hang out with you guys. I really enjoyed that, so thank you. Let me see. Jem, are you here? I am present. Oh. <laughs> That's so strange. I think you actually removed me from the whole space, so I couldn't even see that you're hosting one now from my other account. Oh. But that's okay. That's okay. I'm, you banned me for tonight from my official one. <laughs> it's okay. I don't actually know where you've got to either. So are we keeping our little secret until yeah, the middle? We are keeping our secret to the middle, although it's not a secret to some people, but to some others it will be. Yeah, all I've just been chatting about, I've, I've thanked Vemp, and I talked about our video podcast that we recorded last night that will be out soon with Jamie. And I said, that was a really good one and it'll be really good for everyone to listen to it because they'll get someone else's version of the principles, which will be great. Yeah, definitely. It was quite a surreal experience, actually. And well, it was a good nearly two hour interview. So we'll get that out very soon and really looking forward to doing other interviews with other three principles teachers and just other people in general, really, because... I, I think that you felt it too, Miles, but uh, like at some points I almost had nothing that I wanted or could say after Jamie stopped speaking. And it's similar to what happens when you speak, but I think that happened to you as well last night. Yeah, it was really nice to listen to someone else because <laughs> I know <laughs> that that feeling where you just drop out of the conceptual mind for a little while and it's so peaceful and it's so rich and it's such a lovely place to sit. But when I'm teaching, I get a hint of it, but I don't get it into the same degree as I do when I'm listening. So, yeah, it was really special for me to be able to listen to someone else teaching. It was, and I think some of the insights that we all got, yeah, I can't wait to get it out and really looking forward to seeing what everyone thinks of it. So, yeah, I just want to say thank you to Jamie for coming on yesterday. And yeah, we've got some really exciting news to tell you guys later. You've all been with us on the journey from the very beginning. Yeah, we'll, we'll speak about that in the middle, but it's completely to do with transformation, which is the topic of tonight. We're not going to need your help, but we've got some interesting changes coming up and you have all been such a big part of it. So we're really excited to share 
some news about where we're heading and where we're going. Yeah, and we probably will need your help. We'll definitely need your help with sharing it and in any other ways, but we'll talk about that a bit more later. For now, I'd just like to say thank you all for being here. It's such a pleasure to get to share with you all every week and a lot of the same faces turn up every week and, you know, it really is a blessing for us all to have this hour together and we really appreciate it. And we'd do it if it was one person, but the fact that we get quite a few people come and listen and listen to the recording afterwards is, you know, we know what a difference just that hour a week checking out of your mind can make. So if we can all just slow down a little bit, just relax. You know, as I say every week, leave your problems at the door. They don't have to be brought into this hour. There's nothing you can do about them for this hour. And just begin to notice that the mind is always working. Thought is always coming and going. But just for this hour, don't take so much notice of it. And when you listen to what we're saying, don't try and work it out with the mind. The mind will always want to reference it to something. It'll be like, yeah, this is like this. Or this means this. Or I already know this. It's like, let go of that. You're going to hear more the less that you think you know. And listen like you would listen to music or the rain falling. It's the listening without listening. You know, we're not listening to learn something to remember. We're listening to have an insight. And if you find that you're not hearing something and that you feel agitated, that's okay too. Because we kind of prod at the ego a little bit. We're prodding up at the intellect that likes to be in charge. So sometimes that can be a little bit uncomfortable. So if that's you, and that can happen at any time, you may have been listening for a year and that happens tonight or next week. It's always about, okay, that is still coming from thought. My thoughts and my feelings are one. And I don't really have to do anything about that. That will pass. In fact, it's a good thing. It means I'm rubbing up against something that is uncomfortable and, and can be let go of. There's so much of us that it's helpful to see beyond to let go of to transcend you know and that's what we're talking about tonight we're talking about this huge subject of transformation if you look in the dictionary it's a marked change in form nature or appearance and it's a word that's thrown around so much this transformation that transformation transform yourself you know it's it's big money a lot of what we buy we buy because of the idea that it will transform us, it will make us better in some way, it will make our lives better. You know, we all at times want to be different or look different. And we live in a world that convinces us that there is a better version of us and that if we can all just get to that version, all of our perceived problems will melt away. But that's an illusion because what we forget, what we don't understand... Well, we do when we understand what we're teaching, but what we haven't understood up until now is the nature of how the mind works. And what that means is it may look like that outside thing that you'll get or you'll transform or you'll be. Well, we'll give you this final destination of peace of mind, you know, this final destination of happiness. But what's really true is you'd get there and the mind will create a whole new set of betters for you to try and find a whole new set of things that you need to be to be that version because it's the carrot and the stick so when we're talking about transformation from the point of view of the understanding of the three principles we're not talking about you know you need to lose weight you need to have more money you know it's it's not the outside form those things great we can play with those things those things can always change but they're not going to change from the level of the material. They're not going to change from the outside unless we change from the inside. So just think for a moment what transformation means to you. Where are you convinced that you would be better if dot, dot, dot? What's that dot, dot, dot for you? What does that mean? And where would you begin from to change that thing that you need to be transformed for you to be okay or to be better or be to the best version of yourself. And when you think about that, what does that feel like? Does it feel exciting? Does it make you feel frozen? Is there an area where you don't take action that you could? It's so interesting to observe the self and what the self does around this idea of transformation. But what we're going to talk about here is what if transformation wasn't anything to do with your willpower 
or struggle or beating yourself up? What if transformation was only dependent on you creating the space for new thought? And from that new thought, a new world would arise. What if it was just about being open to letting go of limiting beliefs? What if it was just about showing up fresh and letting things just fall away? Because I can tell you that's the truth of transformation. You know, it's why the outside world sells us so much with the idea of transformation, but we never really get change from that. It's a ping pong effect because we're not going upstream. We're not going to where transformation really comes from. And that's from thought. And we can even look at it a little bit deeper as it's just our ideas of ourselves that are constantly evolving. And when we're able to look at that and challenge that, that evolving is really natural. That just happens. It's not forced. There's times where, we, you know, I talk about this a lot, like, of course, we take action. Sometimes it can feel like we're going to force ourselves into doing something, but that still comes from thought. An understanding of who you are is a game changer for how you show up in the world and transforming into all the things that you may think you want to be but can't be because of your limiting beliefs. So it really is an inside job. You know, we say it every week, everything comes from within. The world that you live in comes from you. It's your version of it. It's how you see it. That all comes from your thoughts and beliefs. So when we begin to uncover that and we go to this place upstream, when we begin to uncover our true nature, we see who we are before the conceptual mind, before the personality, before the set of beliefs that we think make us. There's something deeper. And from that place, that's where our fresh ideas come from. That's where inspiration comes from. That's where action occurs from. That's where transformation comes from. So it really is this deeper knowing that creates transformation. It's not the crappy thought that goes round and round and round in your head that tells you what you need to do that you never do. Can you just see the different levels? It's, it's that repetitive thinking, I should show up in this way, I should look like this, I should do this. It, and you'll notice that that thought comes, but we don't do anything about it. It's because it's from the level of the intellect. It's not from the depth of who we are. We're not seeing it deeply enough. We're stuck. You know, and anything that we're stuck within our head is not going to be solved from where we're stuck in our heads. There has to be something deeper that's seen. So for you, what could that be right now? Maybe it's nothing, maybe it's something. But I guarantee you it's going deeper and seeing who you are, where the answer lies, not in the manipulation of the world, not in the constant to in and froing of your mind. And can you see how helpful it would be if transformation came from understanding who you really are and how life really works rather than the battles that we can get in in the world, how much simpler this is to understand. It's almost like we've been conditioned to fight with the world and fight with ourselves. And that's a really tough place to live from because if we're always in a fight with the self, we're not expanding, we're not evolving, we're not growing, we're kind of staying stuck in our limitations because we're seeing them as true and we're pointing to limitations not being true so why would you fight in your head and have a battle with yourself about a limitation if it wasn't true you'd be compounding the limitation with your own thought rather than seeing it as thought so that's what we're talking about with the depth of this we see that thought creates everything. So, and we see that thought isn't true. You know, a lot of the time it's what we're making up. And so when we see that that thought isn't true, we don't have to get into a battle with that thinking over how it could look different, how we could be different. We just see, oh, I'm making that up again. That doesn't say anything about me. 
that's just the transient experience on the table of what I look like right now, how I'm coming across right now, what I think of myself right now. It's not a fundamental truth. Truth isn't form. The form comes and goes. It's changing all the time. So it's that which changes can't be a truth because it changes. There's a lovely quote by Eckhart Nitz. As far as inner transformation is concerned, there is nothing you can do about it. You cannot transform yourself and you certainly can't transform your partner or anybody else. All you can do is create a space for transformation to happen and for grace and love to enter. So if you see that from what we're talking about here, it's not the battle for transformation, it's not the willpower, it's not the mind grabbing hold of it and doing something with it. It's creating the space for it to be seen differently. So this opening that we talk about in the principles and in the unminding conversations that we have is that we are creating space. We are just pointing you away from what you think to something deeper. So from that space, something fresh can come through about who you are and your experience. And we call that insight. You know, that's an insight to have some fresh thinking that makes you or the world look different. Because when you're not shackled by those old limiting beliefs, it's a natural transformation. It's a coming out of the mind, out of the old ways, out of the old thinking, and something fresh turns up. That's what transformation is. So when we begin to challenge what we've been told and we wake up to what we are made of, we see that we're resilient. And from that place, we can start to observe ourselves. We observe who we are. We become more objective. We're less caught up in what we say about ourselves. And we all have, I mean, I'm pretty sure we all have a level at some place of negative thinking about ourselves that we think is true. Some shitty thinking about the self that you identify with, that means something to you. And that isn't truth. Again, that is thought that isn't true. So when we can observe that, we can begin to free ourselves of it. We don't have to believe in it. So that objectivity comes in from seeing how made up our experience from thought is, how this identity that looks so fixed and so real is just a compilation of thought that we've built up throughout our whole life that we've thought over and over again that someone's pointed to us and said, you are that, you are this, what we've believed about how the world says we should look or we should be or we should feel. And, and suddenly all of this turns into a character. It turns into a personality. It turns into a person that believes it all. It feels like it's stuck with it all, that feels like it's fixed. But from the objective space, from the witness of self, we see that none of that's fixed. It's constantly changing. And we begin to see, well, actually, even within those boundaries of the thinking of what I think I am, that changes too. That isn't set. Because sometimes I think I'm great and sometimes I think I'm shit. So... That can't be set either. That has to be transient. So actually, I've got boundaries around my change and my transformation within who I already am because that fluctuates. There's always this fluctuation of the self. So what we're doing here is we're getting to observe those boundaries around who we think we are and that fixed thinking of who we are and just cast off the boundaries of it and just say well okay I've made all that up what can I make up now who can I be how can I see myself differently how can I stop giving myself a hard time about who I think I am and connect more deeply to who I really am because that's an amazing space to touch you know I don't live there but I know I I access it occasionally I fall into it I have the experience of knowing and that's creative, it has ideas, it has resilience. You know, it's infinite, it has 
potential. It doesn't see the limitations. It's it's at awe with just being alive. So actually seeing that and then having those experiences, well, you know, I don't live there. As I said, I, I kind of live between both. But when I come back into the humanness and I get caught up, that caught upness doesn't seem as fixed. That caught upness doesn't feel as sticky. It feels like, okay, I, I know I'm caught up here, but I kind of don't have to take it as seriously as I used to. I don't really have to believe what I think in those moments of being caught up in the way that I used to. There's something different to my experience now. It's, yes, of course I get caught up. Of course I have thoughts about the self that I identify with from time to time that aren't great. But I fundamentally know it's bullshit, even if I'm believing it. <laughs> I know it's crap. You know, that's the difference when we start to uncover this. So when this challenging, this waking up, this objectivity is freedom. Because we see that we're not the thoughts that we think. We see that we're something deeper, which arises. We see it. Now we see it. Now we don't. You know, it's a bit like a magic act. It's like sometimes I'm completely aware and sitting in this divine inspiration, this beautiful feeling. And sometimes I'm really caught up. You know, I'm really contracted, really feel limited. But I guess I'm okay with that now. And as I said, I don't take it as seriously because I know that whatever it is, is made of the same thing that I feel when I'm feeling amazing. It's not, it's not like I can ever be separate from who I am. I just seem to be a little bit further away from it. And that further away, the gap that creates the further away is thought. Yeah, I can never not be who I really am. I can never not be this deeper sense of who I am, this energy, this truth, this oneness. I'm always that. That's always there. That's the screen. I'm the movie that's playing on the screen. And the gap that I feel between being that and then being really caught up is all thought. I hope this is making sense. So it's like the separation, when I'm feeling separate from my true self, the separation isn't true. The separation is my thinking getting in the way. Thought appearing as if I am not that. Yeah, that, that's a really amazing thing to see. Because... The simplicity of that is that the only thing that needs to fall away for me to begin to feel and see who I am again is thought. Thought needs to drop away. And as thought drops away, I'm back to oneness, to peace, to love, to all the innate, infinite, creative potential that I really am. So it's not anything I can actually do to get back there. Or to see it, it's just this natural process of thought appearing, thought disappearing. Yeah, thought looking real, thought not looking real. I can't remember who said it, but I remember hearing this and I still love it. It was that we have two gifts as a human. One is seeing thought is real and one is seeing that it's not. So one is living in the human experience, really believing our thinking getting caught up, all of those things is still a gift. But now we have this other gift of seeing that thought isn't true, of seeing who we really are and having access to the deeper sense of who we are, which really is the most enriching experience I think that one can have as a human. So yeah, there's that. There's this richness available to us when we see through who we are not. Think about the mind. It's going to want a how to. It's going to want, well, how do I do this? How do I do, what do I do? Is there an exercise? Is, you know, um, do I do affirmations? Do, and it's like, no, that's more separation. That's more identity. That's more you doing. The falling away from doing. So transformation is not really 
quite what we think it is. It's not really about getting or being better. It's not about adding. It's more about letting go of everything that isn't you. Letting go of your beliefs, letting go of your sense of self, the ideas that you beat yourself up with, letting go of your expectations. All of the selfing that we do. Because there's something in the glimpse of that that transforms life. And we're still going to come back to selfing and expectations and beliefs. But it's wonderful to be able to destroy and create, destroy and create. Begin to see it differently, begin to have new experiences. We're not supposed to be sat. I've got something to read at this point because it feels like the right point to do it. And it's from a book called Untamed. And it's by Glennon Doyle. It is, I am a human being meant to be in perpetual becoming. If I am living bravely, my entire life will become a million deaths and rebirths. My goal is not to remain the same, but to live in such a way that each day, year, moment, relationship, conversation and crisis is the material I use to become a truer, more beautiful version of myself. The goal is to surrender constantly who I just was in order to become who the next moment calls me to be. I will not hold on to a single existing idea, opinion, identity, story or relationship that keeps me from emerging anew. I cannot hold on too tightly to any riverbank. I must let go of the shore in order to travel deeper and see farther again and again and then again until the final death and rebirth right up until then guess what i love about that is that willingness to destroy ourselves to be born again to see ourselves in a new way to have a new experience of being we can't have that without really challenging and seeing through the illusion that we've created of the self to coming home to something deeper. That author was able to, to write that and say that about herself because she'd touched the deeper space. She'd seen the truth of who she was. And I'm sure that there's still fear for that person. I can still be fearful, but... It doesn't have the same grip. I will allow myself to live. I allow myself to love. I allow myself to be vulnerable. I I allow myself all of those things because there's so much richness in the destruction of who we think we are and the emerging of something new. I mean, this is probably an opinion rather than a principle's understanding, but doesn't look to me like we're supposed to be here to get to death as safely as possible I remember speaking to a fellow coach a little while ago and I was doing a course and I think the course was on love and relationships and he'd recently you know gone through a breakdown in his marriage and and I said to him what I'm talking about heartbreak tonight and what would you say what would your advice be what was the one thing you'd tell the the people on the course if you could about heartbreak and he said this is a man going through a divorce of from a woman that he adored was that it would be a shame to not experience it at least once in your life that was really profound to me because it was like wow it's seeing what can come out of that it's seeing when we contract when we actually go into a time that's very difficult in life when we have suffering that's often when we have the most transformation it's often when we do look within when we do question who we are it's unfortunate but it is through that contraction through that pressure through those trials and tribulations that we grow and we come out differently So there's something in that. There's something in 
being able to, to challenge the self. You know, this is great what we're doing here because we get to do it without the suffering. It doesn't mean suffering won't come. We all get our fair share, I believe, in our lives. But yeah, we get to transform too by just exploration rather than by being beaten up by life. Now that's available to all of us. You know, what we're talking about here is available for every single person. We are all made of the same thing. So this power of looking at what the mind is doing, at looking who we are before what the mind is saying, this is the way of transformation. You know, I've experienced it for myself. Jem has. I've seen it with clients and colleagues and clients of colleagues. It, and it's not about forcing it. If obviously, there's times where we, you know, I don't want to do that today. And we go and do it. You know, it's really helpful to understand that thought isn't true from that level. But at the deepest level, there will be a shift, an internal shift. Something from within will change and life will transform. And that is the only way I believe it will ever transform. It starts with us it's like the only way out is in that is so true your true nature is the bridge to transformation your true nature is the bridge to freedom it is all inside of you it's already there and this takes me on to reading something else and it is from jamie smart jamie smart is our first guest on our video show he was with us yesterday and that will be out on YouTube soon. Wonderful Free Principles coach and author. And he wrote this, which I really, really love. And it is called The End of the Caterpillar's World. Once a caterpillar sheds its skin to reveal the chrysalis that will offer protection during the process of metamorphosis, the caterpillar starts to disintegrate, resulting in a kind of caterpillar soup this creative broth contains a number of surviving body parts, as well as a huge number of imaginal cells. They have been contained within the body of the caterpillar since it was born. The imaginal cells start to join up and the butterfly emerges from this caterpillar soup. This metamorphosis from caterpillar to butterfly can be a compelling metaphor for personal and collective transformations. The blueprint of the butterfly already exists within the body of the caterpillar, contained within the imaginal cells. Similarly, the pattern of your transformation is already there within you, contained within the formless energy of who you really are. The caterpillar doesn't work at becoming a butterfly, it transforms in harmony with its pre-existing nature. Similarly, you don't have to struggle or work at transformation. Aligning to who you really are is in harmony with your pre-existing nature. The change from caterpillar to butterfly is a metamorphosis, a genuine transformation at the most fundamental level. Similarly, aligning to your most inspired and inspiring life is a genuine transformation, a profound reordering of your experience of life and how you relate to it. So what that points to is the transformation that you seek already exists within you. The blueprint of the butterfly was in the caterpillar. So can you see the simplicity of that? How, how what we've pointed to, this glimpse, this understanding of this true nature of who you are will reveal that transformation it will come through because you let go of what you are not. It isn't a struggle. It's, it can have the appearance of it, but it's what's already there waiting to be revealed. So I, I really love that. I just think when we look out to nature, when we look out to the universe, there's so many reflections of truth. There's so many reflections showing us the natural order of things, the symbiosis of things, the interconnectedness of all things. So going back to what I said at the beginning, what does it look like to you now? 
now we've had oh, I've been talking for ages now we've had like 40 minutes of of looking towards this essential truth that question you asked yourself at the beginning of what you would like to change does it look the same does it look different does it look that getting there might be a much simpler thing than you thought and maybe completely different than you thought maybe it's not about fighting with your intellect maybe it's not about willpower maybe it's just about seeing your true nature and uncovering you becoming the butterfly and there's a lovely Eckhart quote that I will end with and then I will pass over to Jem and I love it because I think this is the choice that we have and we spoke about a lot of our transformations often come from challenges and suffering and he says you can use a challenge or suffering to awaken you or you can allow it to pull you even deeper into sleep. And I think, for me, I've been lucky enough to allow it to awaken me, or it has awakened me. You know, whether that's a choice or not, I don't know really. But I think if we can be brave and look at our experiences and not let them harden us and get them to make us softer, allow us our vulnerabilities and show up in a way that we live life more, then I think that's really good. That's the best we can do. I hope you're not all kind of sleepy and too relaxed. I'd love it if anyone else had something to come up and say, well, Gem sorts her tech issues out. I've got someone come up. Hi, how are you? Thank you. I'm good. Uh, happy to be here. Very interesting topic and great that you opened up a room. Oh, that's really, really cool. So thanks for being here. I just got in a few minutes ago, so I don't know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, we've been actually speaking about the power of transformation. We actually do it every week. It's called the Unminding Project. We've been going for about a year and a half and we just point people home to something a bit deeper about their experience oh beautiful so for me what i'm into it now is trading psychology so i'm a day trader still a beginner i would say even like for a year and a, one and a half almost and psychology let's say in trading it's like 80 percent the trading the charts reading everything is 20 percent. and i think this can be this can be like for everything you do. It's always a mindset. It's always first created as a thought or, or, you know what I mean? I don't know if I can explain it right, but transformation starts in our head, right? And I think it starts when you start really realizing who you are, looking at yourself and not just when we talk about ourselves, it's still, I don't know if I can, if I'm on the right path, don't want to say nothing wrong so basically <laughs> no, you're fine no I totally get what you're yeah. saying and actually interestingly my friend that was the coach that I spoke about earlier that you didn't hear is actually teaches this in trading he's actually a, a trading coach so it's really interesting because everything comes from there so you're completely right it's I'd say it's not even 80 percent I'd say it's 100 percent us and if you look at a chart well, what does that reflect that reflects thought because a chart is people buying and selling so it's psychology so everything comes back to the mind and actually what we talk about here is a bit deeper than the mind it's before the mind but the whole thing is is everything it's thought creates absolutely everything and we don't see that and when we wake up to that then we can have a much better experience of being alive of being this human so it really does make sense. And I don't know how to say your name. So can you say it for me, please? Yeah, sorry. I changed that the other day. I don't know if you know Zhu Wei. Zhu Wei. The of the North Korean president, let's call him. And he forbid that name because it's his daughter name. And now everyone who has that name has to change it. So I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought it would be so funny if like a lot of people would do that on social media. I think he will be so upset. But uh, yeah, it's actually Queen Money. But it's, uh, yeah, for now, it's Zhu Wei. 
nice to meet you, Mollis. Lovely to meet you. Thank you for coming up and speaking. I really appreciate it. And Jem, are you there now? I am here. Sorry, guys, I'm having real problems. I don't know if it's just me, but I can just hear you guys cutting out. So hopefully it's my end and not your end. But I did hear everything. I just had to skip in and out then. And I guess the first question that comes straight to my mind is, why does transformation never come when you want it? Oh, great question. I guess it's the wanting. I think we're automatically creating a resistance by saying it's not who we already are. I think it goes back to the blueprint comments and the fact that everything is already within us. It just has to be revealed. So if we're saying, I want transformation, we're almost saying it's not there. And we kind of create this weird juxtaposition. So I guess it's like similar to resistance. Like when we resist life, we're doing exactly the same thing. So yeah, that's how it would look to me. It's just that we're saying, I want, you know, and I want is always ego, <laughs> always ego. So if we can see through that and actually challenge that and go to a deeper space, we may get transformation, not in the way that we wanted. It may be completely different, but it will occur. So that's what I'd point to there. Does that make sense to you, Jem? Yeah, it does. And something that I'm trying to sort of quantify it in my mind, which is always a, a bad thing, <laughs> but something that I wouldn't say I've been struggling with, but when you go through this transformation process, so um, well, I was on a private course with Moles that finished a couple of weeks ago, and we were talking about the Jamie example from going from the caterpillar to the butterfly. And I heard something that really hit me hard and I've been thinking about it ever since. I'm going to talk about suicidal feelings and stuff, so um, I don't want to trigger anybody, but I spent most of my life like surviving, getting through and waking up thinking, oh, I don't want to be here. And it was really, really hard. And I heard something with the transformation from the caterpillar to the butterfly. And it was like, well, all I was really doing is I was holding myself in a position that I didn't want to be anymore. I'd outgrown that person. So all of those feelings of death that I was experiencing, it was a feeling of death, but it was that I wanted the death of the, the Gemma that I was living. And I'd never heard anything that had kind of explained it in that way. And obviously we've been working together for a very, very long time and we do the podcast every week. And it just goes to show that sometimes you know, your mind needs to be able to connect with it or just hear something. So for me, it was like, okay, well, I was always supposed to be the butterfly, but for some reason, I was just telling myself that I was always going to be stuck as the caterpillar. And so all of those, because I did feel a lot of guilt, a lot of shame for even experiencing and feeling that life of feeling suicidal. And now it's been repictured, reframed. So now it's like, okay, you just didn't understand. And to have that knowledge, knowing, is huge because you can listen to things and you can hear things, but when you actually know it, and that's what we're all working towards, I guess, by being in the understanding, is transformation will come and you don't know when, you can never ever push it, and it can be really painful. Like, you know, you see on the TV or on social media that, oh, this healing journey is really magical, crystals, or bullshit, okay? It can be really hard, but you're leaving that person that you thought you were. So it's, you're losing your old self in a way. It is like a rebirth. So it's, I think it is a huge, huge process. It's the, it's the best thing that I could ever imagine of finding and understanding. Sometimes it's really not pretty, and that's okay. It's, you know, it's not supposed to be. So I don't think that's really a question. It's more of just explaining maybe what's happened recently, but it's, there's always a, something's happened recently. There's always a journey. And yeah, I just wanted to say, I guess that sometimes you'll hear something and it will, it will change the way that you've thought about everything. And that, that's not because it's one specific thing. It's just being in the conversation, being around the understanding. But I'm never going to be able to forget that. And I think, yeah, to go from a whole life of feeling a certain way and thinking a certain way is really relieving. And so, 
yeah, I just wanted to say thank you to Jamie, to you, and just that it is always available, even if you don't think it is, and it's going to be painful. So I guess a question from that would be like, if you do feel like you're almost going through a death of the old you, how can how can that be more palatable? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good question. Um, two things I want to point out there. One is it doesn't always have to be painful. And number two is we don't want to turn this into who you are now needs to be different. We're actually pointing to who you are now is perfect, but there will be evolution and changes within that. We are here as a human to evolve, to see things differently, to transcend our old self into a new self. But that isn't going to come from looking at yourself now and thinking it isn't good enough. Actually, for you to see yourself as completely good enough now is going to allow for those transformations to come and be a bit easier. We still will go through the contractions and the death of the old self sometimes that is painful, but that isn't set. You know, we can have many, many different experiences of transformation. There isn't just the one really difficult one. And also... You know, Jem's talking about an insight. It's something she saw from within her. It was already there, but it was revealed because she heard something. And then that insight came through and it changed everything for her. You know, I'm 10 years in the understanding. I'm completely aware that I could definitely have more insights. I hope I do have more insights that will turn everything on its head. We're not a finished product. This isn't about not being perfect as you are. And it's not about getting to a finished product. It's about just having this human experience and this evolution. And through this evolution, these transformations that will occur. That makes a, a lot of sense. And I think, yeah, even when you get the insights, your brain afterwards still tries to quantify it and say, well, well, that's because of that. And that's because of that. And sometimes, well, always, you just need to have the insight and leave it as that. Exactly. Exactly. Such a good point, Gem. It's like the mind wants to own the insight and it's nothing to do with the mind. So when you get those moments, don't try and analyze it or work it out. Allow it to be and let it just do its thing. Let it percolate in your system. Leave the mind out of it if you can. Perfect. If, if I may add something to this and slightly of a prior subject also, is that for change to happen in Buddhism, you were talking about that I want or I need to change. Like there is several elements in that, which is I, which is the self and the ego, which needs to dissolve, first of all. And then you have, second of all, you have the need or the want, which is as a, what we call a sankara, which is essentially cravings or things that we want, but don't necessarily need. We, we essentially want, need to go into the center of the self more to allow what is happening and what needs to happen to happen rather than putting our daily blockages in the way of that transformation. Thank you. Yeah. For the three principles from this understanding, it's when we see through personal thought that I want dissolves. And I think that's the best way that I could explain it from the principles. It, it's when we touch that space, there isn't a desire to transform or change or any of those things. That's always personal. It's just a state of being, which is, you know, blissful. Well, when we really get down to who we are, there is no self. There's no yeah. self to worry about all of that bullshit, is there? I, I just wanted to add on something to that topic. It's... Um, from Tony Robbins, he is saying that our mind is going by who we believe we are, which is basically the identity. So he say it, um, it can make it easier, this transformation, if you write down who you were, were and your new you, your new identity, who you are now. Are you still getting mad on the same reasons as before? Do you, you know, how do you cope with problems now? Like anything you can think of, you can write it down so your mind knows who you are now. And then you can go with it like affirmation, read it on to you loud or in your mind and stuff like that. I think it's also a very powerful tool I wanted to share with you guys. Well, thank you. If that resonates with anyone, what, Joy, what we do here is... It's absolutely fine. Everyone has their own ways. Some meditate, some different religions, some journals, you know, it, affirmations. With the principles, we kind of leave that to the person. 
we say, okay, you uncover who you really are. And from that, from that well of creativity and resilience and infinite potential, you'll know the things that are going to be helpful to you. So I love that you found that helpful to you. That's great. Gem? Yeah, thank you for coming yeah. up, um, Jure and Su- Surian. Yeah, say I say Surian. Surian. So yeah, thank you very, very much. Yeah, we've got some big news, guys. Um, quite a lot to explain, really. And, well, Moles, would you, you're probably better at telling the story because I'm probably going to go full force and say something I might not be able to. So if you give a brief <laughs> outline, then I can. <laughs> OK, darling, no problem. Yes, yeah, so um, some of you will know, some of you will not know that we've been the Unminding Project for a year and a half. It's our baby. We love it. Around three months ago, we got a letter from some lawyers to say that they didn't want us to be the Unminding Project anymore. They're a company called Unmind and they wanted to have some conversations with us about ways in which we could both be accommodated with this name because they had the trademark. So we actually originally thought that, you know, maybe there would just be a couple of little changes and we'd be able to keep our name. So what actually happened is we had three conversations, three meetings with their lawyers. The lawyer that we actually dealt with was was really nice. I actually can't say anything bad about him. He made the process really nice. And because when we first got the original lawyer's letter, we were both scared. We were like, oh, my God, these guys saying they're going to take us to court if we don't change our name. So we got into dialogue. We decided the best way was to just open lines of communication, see where we could get to. But the bottom line was, change your name or we're taking you to call. So talking of transformation, we will be changing. So we will actually now be, instead of the Unminding Project, we are going to be One Minding, a revolution for the mind. So everything's going to change. We're going to have new branding, new website, new everything. And actually it's turned from something that was a bit scary into something that we're quite excited about. But obviously... We built Unminding up for a year and a half and it's happened really organically. So to have to do everything within a month is quite intense. So we've got a lot to do. So if there's anybody out there in in our listeners that can help in any way, then please get in touch. We've already had some amazing help from Car Rip Doe, or who I like to call Rip. He has actually done our logo and our branding. So We don't have to worry about that. We're so thankful. It looks amazing. We're not going to reveal it right now, but we just want to say such a huge thank you to him. It was like straight away he was contacted us and got it done, and we love what he's done. So we actually think it looks much better than our old kind of logo. So we're really, really pleased with that. And lots of the cult community have got in touch and offered help. So I'm now going to hand over to Jem, who hopefully has heard what I've said. Yes, I heard everything and it's actually very, very exciting. I mean, I hope, do you guys like the name One Minding? I think going from the Unminding Project to One Minding is a great move. Just the word One Minding, that's what we are. We're all one and we are the revolution for the mind. Um, Yeah, we were, (laughs) when we got the email, it's, well, it wasn't a nice email, let's be honest. It was a, hi, you are breaking the law (laughs) and... If you don't do anything about it, we're going to do something about it. And yes, the the lawyer, he was fantastic. And yeah, I suppose the bit that I was going to sort of shy away from is that this is a free project and it will always be a free project. We want to be able to share this understanding with everybody and never, ever charge anything for it. So it was really important for us to make sure that we're doing everything correctly now. We don't want to get in trouble and we are really crossing the T's and dotting the I's. We've always said we are going to be the number one mental health podcast in the world. And I think getting letters from big companies saying, excuse me, we need to change your name because it's going to be confusing for the general public. I think we're making waves. And I think that this is nothing but a good thing for us. Um, you know, when the big man starts coming after you, I think you're doing something in the right direction or or not, as some would say. So... Thank you so much to Crypto. We've already got our launch day. I think you're going to love it. We're a brand. We want people to be able to see like the Nike tick and know it's Nike. So I think we've got that now. And Crypto, you have been amazing. Anybody that needs artwork and graphic design, please get in contact with him. 
And Mr O actually helped us with the letters to contact the lawyers. And we've had lots of messages of support. Kelly B has donated towards our trademarking costs. And there are a few things that we need help with. So if there's anyone that is good at website design and just marketing, really, we've done everything completely organically. And we really want this to be, well, it's already looking pretty professional, but it's going to be very, just not, not different, but it's going to be, well, one minding. I'm getting really excited just like thinking about all the different things that we're going to do. I mean, I don't know if you guys have seen the website now. We've done it between ourselves and we think it looks good, but it doesn't look amazing. But we want our new one to look amazing. So any ideas that anybody's got, things for social media and our YouTube channel as well. So we've got the video that will be coming out shortly with Jamie Smart. And what we really would need is like an introduction and an, and an outro for YouTube. Just a few seconds. I mean, I've tried to make a couple and they're not amazing. But if there's anyone that's listening that could get in contact with us about that, that would be really, really helpful as well. So you've all been with us on the journey from the beginning and any input, any feedback or how you think we can reach more people uh, with our rebrand. So we've got yeah a month to go and any help that we can ask for from you guys will be fantastic. And we were going to announce it on the actual day of the rebrand in about a month, but our Artorius accidentally said it this morning in the space. So thanks, Art, <laughs> and that's why we're here now. You probably did us a favour because actually we can ask for help now, can't we? Because it's, uh, you know, but yeah, we weren't going to announce that we were one-minded yet. So he was like, oh, yeah, one-minded. <laughs> we're like, Art. But it's all good. It's all meant to be. But definitely, you know, the website, great if we can get help with that but we definitely need an intro and an outro maybe a, a video to put on the website would be the things that we'd probably have the most problems doing ourselves but yeah it's really exciting the launch date is going to be wednesday the 29th of march okay and we're going to do our first live youtube so we won't be on spaces i don't know how it works to be fair i'm not techie at all but hopefully we'll be able to stream it onto twitter but it's definitely going to be live on YouTube. So that's going to be fun to do. If anyone wants to join us, please let us know because we want to, we want it to be a, a family affair of all the people that have been with us over the last year and a half. And yet, as Jem said, it's very, very exciting. It's, it feels a bit daunting. There's a lot to do, but, you know, we're, we're made for this. The Unminding Project is where our heart and souls are. And, and we really, really love that you guys are all part of our team and have been helping us along the way with different things at different points and as Jem said a big thank you to Crypto a big thank you to Mr O for helping us with the lawyers a big thank you to our sponsors Vemp and to my lovely friend Kelly B for helping us with our trademarking costs so if there's anything that you can do or anything that you can donate please let us know we'd be more than appreciative of it and yeah one minding really excited I love it one minding it just how did we not think of that in the beginning? <laughs> when, when I did look through actually the name of potential project names, One Minding was actually at the top. So whether we put that on at a later date or it was always meant to be, we'll probably never know. But just to follow on from the ideas and things that we need for the rebrand, even if you guys, you know, you don't know how to make a website like us or you don't know how to do the YouTube outros, if you've got ideas that will look good or that you think will work let us know about that as well because we don't know what's going to look best and any input is going to be really helpful you don't need to know how to actually physically do it for us but just any ideas we want your input as much as possible because it's one minding it's it's all of us so you're going to come up with an idea that me and moles don't have that somebody's going to connect with in a different way so it's really a team effort yeah agreed We've said from the beginning, we're a team. Us, our listeners, you know, the podcast listeners, we're all in this together. We're all here to create a mentally healthy world and to get people to realise who they really are and stop this identification with things and the outside world and attachments and needs and just to have a more loving, peaceful experience of, of this world kind of short journey that we're on. You know, we're, how long are we humans for? You know, we get here, we might as well try and enjoy it as much as possible. Yeah, absolutely. 
I did actually have something to read today that follows on perfectly from what we just discussed. But is there anything else that you think we need to cover in regards to the rebrand with people? No, darling, I think it was a really lovely conversation. Thank you for everybody for showing up. I hope you got something out of it. And remember that it's not just on the call, it's after the call. This is like what Gemma and I do here is we plant seeds. We never know when the flower is going to bloom. So just be open to the fact that you've heard something here today that at any point during the next week, month or year, something could be revealed. You could have your own insight and things can look different for you. You never know when it's going to happen. <laughs> you really don't. And I, I think I've actually read this before, but it was a long time ago and you might hear something different this time anyway. <laughs> so it's by Matt Haig and it's from the book Reasons to Stay Alive. And it says, the world is increasingly designed to depress us. Happiness isn't very good for the economy. If we were happy with what we had, why would we need more? How do you sell an anti-aging moisturiser? You make someone worry about ageing. How do you get people to vote for a political party? You make them worry about immigration. How do you get them to buy insurance? By making them worry about everything. How do you get them to have plastic surgery? By highlighting their physical flaws. How do you get them to watch a TV show? By making them worry about missing out. How do you get them to buy a new smartphone? By making them feel like they are being left behind. To be calm becomes a kind of revolutionary act. To be happy with your own non-upgraded existence. To be comfortable with our messy human selves would not be good for business. Yet we have no other world to live in. And actually, when we do really look closely, the world of stuff and advertising is not really life. Life is all the other stuff. Life is what's left when you take all of that crap away, or at least ignore it for a while. Life is the people who love you. No one will ever choose to stay alive for an iPhone. It's the people we reach via the iPhone that matter. And once we begin to recover and to live again, we do so with new eyes. Things become clearer, and we are aware of things that we were not aware of before. And I think that points perfectly to the transformation conversation that we've all spoken about tonight and thank you all for being here and really looking forward to one minding and having all of you with us and growing into something that we can't even imagine right now yeah beautiful thank you everybody and i totally agree it's like bigger and better things and i just want to leave you with a quote by one of my favorite teachers ram das our whole spiritual transformation brings us to the point where we realize that in our own being we are enough.